Hello, I'm Luis Serrano from Cohere AI. This video is about word and sentence embeddings. Word and sentence embeddings are the bread and butter of large language models. Why is this? Well, the idea of language models is to get the computer to understand and process language. However, language is made by words, whereas computers can only process numbers. So word embeddings are a way to go from words to numbers. So they associate each word with a list of numbers. And sentence embeddings are the same thing. They associate each sentence with a list of numbers but in a way that makes sense. However, I should clarify that this is not done by humans looking at the words and associating numbers that make sense. No, 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 this is done by a computer, normally a neural network or complicated model. And what it does is that it looks at context. So if two words appear a lot in the same context, it gets them closer and closer and closer. Same thing with sentences. And at the end of the day, you get some really, really cool results. Let me show you. This video accompanies this blog post called What are Word and Sentence Embeddings, which you can find at the Cohere blog. So let's start with a quiz. What you see over here is a simple word embedding. What is it? It's a bunch of words located in the plane. Each one has its own coordinates. For example, the word banana has coordinate 65 because you find a banana, you have to start at the origin, the point with coordinate 00, zero and move six steps to the right and five steps up. So here is the question. We're supposed to locate the word apple in this embedding. And there are three options. Option A, option B, and option C. And the question for you is, where would you put the word apple here? Feel free to pause the video and think about it. And I'll tell you the answer. I would put it on spot C. Why? Well, because as you can see in this word embedding, words that are similar are located close by and words that are different are located far away. So the word apple would be close to the words for other fruits like banana, cherry, or strawberry. So the coordinates that I would add is 5, 5. This is one very important property of word embeddings. Similar words are located close by and different words are located far apart. Word embeddings also have some really interesting properties. For example, let's look at this other quiz. Let's say that you have the words puppy, dog, and calf. And we'd like to locate the word cow somewhere in this embedding. So where do you think would be the best place to put it? In spot A, in spot B, or in spot C? So again, feel free to pause the video and take some time to think about it. This one's a little harder than the previous one. And I'll tell you the answer. So although it would be tempting to put it close to calf because it's a similar animal or close to dog, I would actually put it in spot C. So this is where I would put cow. And why? Well, the reason is that embeddings tend to capture analogies well. What's an analogy? For example, a puppy is to a dog like a calf is to a cow because a puppy is a baby dog and a calf is a baby cow. That is captured with these two blue arrows over here. And there's another analogy. A puppy is to a calf like a dog is to a cow and that's captured in these two green edges over here. So the fact that these words form a rectangular is pretty interesting. Actually what they would normally form is some kind of parallelogram but still analogies are really nicely captured in embeddings but more than analogies I like to think of them as word math. What I mean by word math? Well I mean that the embedding is capturing in its axis important information. Let's say that we look at the horizontal axis. So what happens in the horizontal axis? As you can see, when you move to the right, the animal gets older. So this one captures age. And what happens with the vertical axis? Well, when you move up, the animal gets bigger and bigger, goes from dog to cow. So this one captures the size. So if you think of the words and their properties, for example, puppy has low age and low size, and cow has high age and high size, etc. Then what's really happening here is that the embedding is breaking each word into several properties and locating these properties on each of the axes. And what if we have more properties? Let's say a third property for these words came up. How would you see this geometrically? Well, now you have to move from two dimensions to three. That means adding an extra axis here that will take care of the third column. And now our points are not in the plane, but they're flying in three-dimensional space. 
And of course, as you imagine, you can continue adding columns to this table on the right. It would be hard to visualize because humans can only see up to three dimensions, but that doesn't mean you can have a really, really big table on the right. And so that's exactly a word embedding. So the word embedding that we saw at the beginning is over here. It's pretty simple. Two numbers for each word. And in general, you would have lots of rows for all the words that exist. And each word is associated to a lot of numbers. So this table has a lot of columns. The cohere embedding has 4096 columns. That means that each word gets associated to a vector of 4096 numbers. And by vector, I just mean a list of 4096 numbers. And just like we saw before, these numbers make sense. So similar words are going to have similar numbers associated with. And each of the columns means some property of the word. Some of them will be able to know as humans. Others we won't, but the computer can use them and get great results with them. So that was for words, but what about sentences? Well, we can do the exact same thing. There are sentence embeddings, which to each sentence that you can imagine associates a bunch of numbers. And here, the cohere embedding has, again, 4,096 numbers for each sentence. And I'm going to show you the first 10 entries of the embedding. There's 4,096 numbers for each sentence, but I'm only going to show you the first 10. And I'm going to show them as shadings, not as actual numbers. And notice that some phrases here are very similar. For example, this one, this one, and this one all talk about Boston ground transportation at the airport. And if you see the shadings, you can see that the numbers are very similar. Now, here is another example of the embedding. This one only gives you two numbers per sentence, but it's actually a simplification of the big embedding. And notice that there's three groups of words. This one over here is a greeting. This one over here talks about liking your dog. And this one over here talks about soccer. So as I say, this is a simplification because the embedding gives 4,096 numbers per sentence. And here we've turned it into two in order to plot them in the plane. But you can imagine that a similar thing happens in a big 4,096 dimensional space where similar phrases are close to each other. And we can do much better than that. The previous embeddings I showed you were for the English language. But Cohere actually has a multilingual embedding that handles more than 100 languages. And for here, let me show you how it works. Let's say that you have the sentences on the right. As you can see, the first three are about birds that live in the woods, and they're in three different languages, and the embedding puts them in similar places. The same thing happens with the soccer-related sentences, with the fruit-related sentences, and with the sky-related sentences. So this is a tremendous embedding that is actually language agnostic and very, very useful. You can actually play with this embedding if you go to the link in the comments below. And that's it for word and sentence embeddings. Be sure to check out the Cohere dashboard where you'll be able to play with these and many other models.